It's the last show of the year. Once more, with feeling. What is going to happen? Do Mahomes and the boys go back to back? Or does Tom Brady firmly cement his legacy as the greatest of all time? Let's find out. Speaking of the greatest of all time, what's happening everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees, and for the final time this season, welcome to the Super Bowl 55 episode of the NFL Football Pick Show for the 2020-2021 NFL season and postseason. Kind of took it on the chin in the championship round, not going to lie. It went the exact opposite of how I wanted and how I predicted it was going to go, with the exception of the totals, and I'm actually having a strong playoff picking the totals. So I went 0-2 straight up, and I went 0-2 against the spread. I told you Green Bay was going to beat Tampa, and I told you that Buffalo was going to upset Kansas City. Neither one of those things happened. Obviously, Green Bay did not cover the minus three and a half that I had them covering, and Buffalo was not able to cover plus three. However, I did correctly tell you to go over on both of the point totals last week, over 53 and a half in KC Buffalo, and over 50 and a half in Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and we're seven and five picking the totals so far in these playoffs, and look, in the regular season, I was awful absolutely awful picking the totals what was i 115 136 and 5 so coming off of that i'm more than happy to be even money across the board straight up and against the spread and to have that little give back there on the totals I do want to take the time to shout out in the Bridgewater's Finest Pick'em Pool the four teams that tied going 2-0, getting all 24 confidence points that they could have gotten last week, correctly predicting this as the Super Bowl, Kansas City, and Tampa Bay. Crack on COVID, taking over from Merriman Will Reign as the overall leader, now leading by seven points in the pool with 1,598 points confidence points now since there is only one game remaining to be played there are only 16 confidence points that remain on the board what that means is only the top three people in the pool crack on covid merriman will reign and the genius only one of those three people has the possibility of being able to win this pool. It comes down to the very last game of the season. It's always more exciting when the final overall championship is still on the line. So congratulations to those three. Now, before we get into the picks for Super Bowl 55, I do want to take the time, as I always do, to let you know that if you go to the description of the video file on YouTube or the audio file on SoundCloud, iTunes, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts, you can find all of my results from last week, such as they were, all of my straight up against the spread and over under plays for Super Bowl 55. You can find, you know, well, you're not going to find information on joining the pools anymore because the pools are now over, but you can find information on joining the NFL YouTube prognosticators Facebook page, which is the core location for for our little community here. You can also find information on my two big affiliates and sponsors from this past season. Those being, of course, the Dynasty Trade Calculator. My affiliate link to the Dynasty Trade Calculator is in the description below. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, the number one resource online for Dynasty, Keeper, and Long-Term Fantasy Football. You're gonna find rankings, trade evaluations, podcasts. It doesn't matter what the layout of your league is the dynasty trade calculator has you covered and if you'll notice i have now started releasing my own personal dynasty rankings that'll be an ongoing thing on this channel uh hopefully of course we're gonna have a cfl season so we'll have that going on the channel as well but worst case scenario we got those dynasty rankings that are going to be coming out all year in the lead up to next season and i also want to take the time to shout out of course my great friends and sponsors 
at Nerd Tease. You know where to go, ladies and gentlemen, nerdtease.ca, and you're going to use that promo code BWFINEST. That is going to save you 15% at checkout, and you're going to get free shipping in Canada on any order over $100 by using that code. Today's blend is a nice, tasty, delicious, kiwi-licious, in fact, and it's just, it. you drink it, and you're just like, ah, oh, spring's going to be here before you know it. It just makes you happy inside. It smells great. It tastes great. It is one of dozens and dozens of incredible tea blends on nerdteas.ca. And there's lots for whatever your taste palette happens to be. If you got a sweet tooth, you got dessert teas, you got green teas, black teas, matcha teas, all over the place. There's any kind of tea that you would like that is there and you can find it. Nerdteas.ca. Promo code BWFINEST, save your money, get your free shipping, find yourself something to love, or find someone you love something to love. You can do it on nerdtease.ca all year round. All right, kids, one more time for old time's sake. Super Bowl 55, Tampa Bay, Kansas City, let's do it. Obviously, this has been a monumental season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now 14-5, and five, the number two seed out of the NFC South, becoming the first team ever to host a Super Bowl matchup, play the Super Bowl in their home building. So uh, this is unprecedented. This is something that we, we don't know. We can't measure what the results of something like this could be, what the benefits of something like this could be. It's literally never happened before. So it's interesting because from like a data analysis perspective, to see something, to watch something that's never happened before in anything, much less the game of football, will be really interesting to just really dive deep after this game is over and see like, huh, that's an interesting edge. I wonder if that only came from the fact that they were playing in their own building. Obviously going up against last year's Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs running it back at 16-2, and champions of the AFC West. Now for this game, temperature is supposed to be anywhere from 64 to 72, so rather mild. There is rain in the forecast. It will be raining 100% during this game. 98% humidity, so it is going to be humid and wet. Winds 11 miles an hour could have an impact on throwing the ball. The Chiefs sit as three-point favorites technically on the road, and I'm going to be referring to it that way. It's on the road. This is a home game for Tampa Bay. They can call it, oh, it's the Super Bowl's played on a neutral field. No, this is a home game for Tampa Bay. I don't care who's in the audience. It's a home game for Tampa Bay. So Chiefs are three-point favorites on the road in Tampa Bay with a game total of 56. Chiefs and Bucks is a matchup of two teams within the top 10 in the regular season in terms of total offense. Kansas City number one this past season. Tampa Bay no slouches at number seven. The vast majority of both of these teams' damage being done through the air. The number one and number two pass offenses from this past regular season. Neither team overly predicated on running the football, but Kansas City found more success over the long haul this season. The number 16 run offense going up against, as I've mentioned multiple times on this show, Tampa Bay just the number 28 run offense, and that hasn't overly changed in these playoffs. Defensively speaking, I think these two teams are more similar than the numbers and the statistics would have you believe, even though I definitely have to give the edge to the Bucks in terms of being the better defensive unit. Bucks the number six total defense in football this year, but the vast majority of that was done on the run defense side of things, where the Bucks were once again the number one run defense in the NFL. Kansas City, middle of the pack, number 16 total defense. They were number 14 against the pass, number 21 against the run, so the secondary a little bit better. Bucks, I got to mention, only number 21 against the pass this year. And that kind of showed itself a little bit. Aaron Rodgers had a good game two weeks ago. So I don't think this Bucks pass defense, especially considering some of the injuries they have on, this, on the defensive side, and they certainly do, and that obviously contributes a decent amount to this, Tampa Bay can be thrown on, and that is scary up against Patrick Mahomes. So far in these playoffs, both of these teams sitting inside the top five in terms of total offense. Kansas City number three, Tampa Bay number five. Remember, only 14 teams made the playoffs. 
uh, in terms of the pass defense, Kansas City number two in these playoffs. So their secondary has stepped up so far in these playoffs. Tampa Bay number six on the run side. Neither team, I've, honestly, both teams very, very similar. Kansas City number seven, Tampa Bay number eight. So far in these playoffs on the defensive side, I can say that most of that has kind of held true from a rankings perspective. Kansas City has leapfrogged Tampa Bay in terms of total defense so far in these playoffs. Chiefs at number five, Bucks at number six. Chiefs have been the better pass defense so far in these playoffs, number six to number 10 of 14 for Tampa Bay. And when it comes to stopping the run, the Bucks, the number two run defense in these playoffs, Chiefs at number seven. This will, of course, be the Bucks' first home game of these playoffs. They were 5-3 and three at home this year. Not the greatest home record in the world, but 5-3. and three, They still got the job done more often than not. Outscoring opponents by just 5 points, 29-24. to 24. They were 5-3 and three against the spread and an even money 4-4 four and four on the totals. The Bucks were also 3-1 and one against AFC opponents this season. Kansas City on the road. It's their first road game of these playoffs, obviously. A perfect 8-0 away from their own building this year. Outscoring opponents by an average of 9 points, 32-23. to 23. However, they were only even money against the spread at 4-4. Four and four. Again, the Chiefs got victimized by so many huge spreads this year. Also, even money on the totals at 4-4. Four and four. The Chiefs did run the table against NFC opponents this year, going a perfect 4-0. With their win in the AFC title game, the Chiefs moved to 15 and 1 as favorites this season. Only 7 and 9 against the spread, but they did cover against the spread 2 weeks ago and are now an even money 8 and 8 in those 16 games. The Bucks as underdogs, now 3 and 2 straight up as betting underdogs this year, 4 and 1 against the spread in those 5 games, now 2 and 3 on the totals after going over 2 weeks ago. Since the calendar year of 2017 began, these two teams have only played each other one time, but interestingly enough, it wasn't that long ago. This was the Chiefs' 27-24 victory over the Bucks just back on November 29th. So we're only talking a little more than two months ago these teams got to play each other in this situation, in this building. Chiefs came out victorious. Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, that game is going to go exactly the same way that it went last time. Like, no, these two teams are different. They have different identities than they did back in, what was that, week 12? Like, these two teams are not the same. However, that's pretty darn recent history that you can at least look back on and see, huh, what worked for the Chiefs in that game? What didn't work for the Bucks in that game? What adjustments might they make? It just makes this game that much more interesting. Now we're going to talk about the injuries and there are plenty of them on both sides of the ball for both teams. The Bucks have a laundry list of teams that have the questionable tag or sorry players that have the questionable tag heading into this game this weekend. Now I'm going to say this I think most if not all of these players who have the questionable tag on them will probably play on Sunday. Anybody doubtful or worse? I'd be very surprised if they suited up. We'll start with the hometown Bucks. On the offensive side, it's wide receiver Mike Evans. Questionable heading into this game with a knee injury. I would expect Mike Evans is probably going to play. Somebody that I actually don't think will play, though, wide receiver Antonio Brown. He's still listed as doubtful with his knee injury. Honestly, I would be surprised if Antonio Brown played in this game. He hasn't been outright declared out yet, but I'd be surprised. Go over to the defensive side, and it's a lot on the defensive side. Probably headlined by safety Antoine Winfield Jr., questionable with an ankle injury. Vita Vea on the defensive line is questionable with an ankle injury. Jason Pierre-Paul at linebacker is questionable with a knee injury, as well as Levante David, one of the best, still one of the most underrated, I think, linebackers in the NFL. He's questionable with a hamstring injury. And then their other safety, Jordan Whitehead, is doubtful in this game with a shoulder injury. I would say Whitehead and Brown unlikely to play. Everybody else still a question mark, but if I had to guess, I think they're going to find a way to play. 
on Kansas City's side, their offense is mostly intact. Sammy Watkins is probable heading into this game. Uh, they're not going to have uh, Demarcus Robinson at wide receiver, but they're so deep at wide receiver. I'm not really worried about that. The real worrisome injury is probably on the offensive line. It's tackle Eric Fisher. He injured his Achilles. He was put on IR. He's done. He's not going to be playing. On the defensive side, cornerback Legarius Sneed, he is questionable with a concussion. I believe he's still in protocol, has not been cleared as of yet. And at the linebacker position, Willie Gay, I don't think he played two weeks ago against Buffalo. He has already been listed as out for this game with his ankle injury. He will not be playing. So plenty of injury storylines to keep an eye on heading into this game on Sunday. Remember, this is only Wednesday morning. As far as I'm concerned, the biggest mismatch heading into this football game is Patrick Mahomes having the football against that Bucks secondary, even if the Bucks secondary was 100%, which I realize they didn't have a ton of this season where their secondary was at 100%, but still, you still got to play the team in front of you. You still got to get the job done. I don't think the Bucs did that in terms of defending the pass for most, if not all, of this season. So when you're talking about the Chiefs, the number one pass offense in football in the regular season, number two so far in these playoffs, up against the 21st best pass defense or 10th out of the 14 teams that made the playoffs, that is the biggest mismatch here. So it'll be interesting, like Patrick Mahomes cannot make mistakes like other quarterbacks have done against Tampa Bay. Now, obviously, the other side of that is Tampa Bay has got to force those mistakes. Tampa Bay has got to get pressure with four guys, maybe bring the fifth guy in on the blitz. They got to hope those linebackers, Jason Pierre Paul and Levante David, they got to hope that they are healthy. They got to hope Vita Vea can cause havoc on that line of scrimmage. They got to get the pressure to force the mistakes, but it's so tough to force Patrick Mahomes to make mistakes. So, all that said, who do I think is going to win? I think the Chiefs are going back to back. It seems like such an easy answer, but this is one of those games where there is no difficult answer. There's an easy answer either way. If you go with the Chiefs, it's the easy answer because they won last year. And they were, what, 14-2 and two in the regular season. They're 15-1 and one this year as favorites. That's the easy answer. If you take the Bucks. They're playing at home and they have Tom Brady at quarterback. So you're picking Tom Brady to win a Super Bowl. That's an easy answer. There's no hard answer to this question. So even though the Chiefs feel like the easy answer, I know they're no easier than picking the other side. I, You know what? I just don't, I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes right now. And I think if it was a better secondary, like if it was like one of those elite, elite pass defenses Maybe you might have something here. And look, yeah, the Chiefs are injured on the offensive line. Maybe the Bucs can get pressure and maybe the Bucs can force a couple of those mistakes. But we've seen teams get pressure on Patrick Mahomes before and he doesn't tend to make these mistakes. So I just feel like that's throwing a dart to say that Tampa Bay will magically do that. I, I got to go with the Chiefs. I'm going to take Kansas City to beat Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay. Chiefs go back to back and win Super Bowl 55. Against the spread, like I said, the Chiefs are three-point favorites, which under normal circumstances would feel like one of those, well, I like them to win, it's a small price to pay, lay the three points. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the three points on the Bucks here. Tampa Bay 4-1 and one against the spread this past season as a dog of less than seven points. They're also 2-0 and oh at home in those situations. They've been an underdog play all playoffs long, just because I don't think they're going to win, I think this is going to be a tight football game that is legitimately won, probably on the foot of Harrison Butker kicking a field goal to win the game. So I'm going to take those three points with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Total in the game set at 56, like we mentioned. The over is trending at 7-5 and five so far in these playoffs. I'm personally 7-5 and five picking the totals. And there's just, there's something about passing teams here. Like these two teams, obviously, as we've established, are predicated on throwing the football. Well, every incompletion stops the clock. Every pass along the sidelines where they go out of bounds probably stops the clock. Teams that are predicated on throwing the ball tend to have more offensive plays, more possessions. The clock moves more slowly. I think this total is a, just a little bit low. 
I'm going to take the over on it, even though it is a mid-50. I'm going to go over 56 points in Kansas City, Tampa Bay. Let's go Chiefs 30, Bucks 28. In terms of my Super Bowl MVP, I mean, my God, they gave it to Mahomes last year after I think he threw two picks and had a fumble or something like that. Like, they gave it to Mahomes last year, and I didn't think it should have gone to Mahomes last year. I guess I got to go with Mahomes. Um, It might be tempting to take somebody there in Kansas City's secondary, especially if there's like a lot of value on a player like that. Like if you're betting it in Vegas, who's going to get Super Bowl MVP? Because I mean, look, what did Brady throw? Brady threw up three straight picks to the Packers two weeks ago. So it might be tempting to grab somebody in Kansas City's secondary. I'm going to have to take the easy answer on this one. We're going to have to go Mahomes to win his second straight Super Bowl MVP. There you have it, folks. Those are the picks. I got Kansas City beating Tampa Bay 30-28 to in Super Bowl 55. I got the Bucks covering plus three in a game that goes over 56 points. And Patrick Mahomes winning his second straight Super Bowl MVP. It is time now for the patented comment of the week from the AFC and NFC Conference Championship episode. So the comment of the week from the conference championship episode is going to go to somebody whose name I don't think I've called this season. It's John Ivy. John was only kind of 50-50 with what he thought was going to happen in the two games, but I think he makes an interesting point, uh, especially on the NFC side. So we're going to give him the comment of the week from the conference championship episode. John says, I think if Mahomes is cleared to play, because this is back when we weren't sure about his head and neck injury, I think if Mahomes is cleared to play, he still won't be fully 100%. Another factor is this, he also has a big toe issue. Not a good combination if you ask me. Yes, I'd like to see the Chiefs win, but they have two strikes already in Mahomes. For the NFC side, I think Tampa Bay will pull an upset against Green Bay. Brady will be the first quarterback in both the AFC and NFC Super Bowl games. So the first quarterback to win conference championships in each conference. And that's exactly what happened. And maybe it was foolish of me to bet against Tom Brady, but... Look, I mean, especially with how that game went, people are trying to... I'm going to take a Green Bay tangent off that. John, thank you very much for your comment. People are kind of framing this NFC Championship game loss by Green Bay the same as, like, the one last year. And it's like, no. Last year, they just got spanked. Last year, there was a team doing something that they had absolutely no idea what to do. Like, they had no counter for it at all. No, Green Bay counterpunched in this game two weeks ago. And we're right there. And coulda, shoulda, woulda, should have gone for it to try to tie that game. It was a bad decision by a young coach. And it happens. But those two games, not at all the same. Sorry, that was my Packers fandom coming out. I felt the need to defend the situation, although I don't really know exactly who I was defending, but apparently I was defending someone. Once again, John Ivey, thank you for your final comment of the week from the 2020-2021 season. And we're done. That's it. No more episodes to film. Super Bowl 55 is upcoming in just a short couple of days. I know you'll enjoy the game. I know I'll enjoy the game. I'm really looking forward to the weekend doing the halftime show. I think that's a great choice for them. And I've discovered in kind of listening to a bit of his music leading up to this, weekend's music just makes me happy. It just, just plain makes me smile. So I'm looking forward to an electric halftime show, even if there aren't a ton of people in attendance. Thank you so much. If you've listened to one iota of one episode from me this season, thank you so much. I so genuinely, honestly appreciate the support, especially in a season like this where I was able to get my partnership with YouTube back, start earning off of these videos again, which it's not like it's a lot of money, but it's important to me because it's, it makes me feel more valued as a a member of YouTube and it makes me feel like I'm, I'm bringing you guys In a weird way, it makes me feel like I'm bringing you better content somehow. Maybe that's not true, but in my brain, it kind of makes me feel that way. So thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. And obviously the journey continues on past this. We're doing the NFL Dynasty rankings all year long. Hopefully we'll have a CFL season to talk about this year. Maybe we might even get into a little bit of NHL now that the NFL season will be firmly in the rear view. You never know what might happen. Stay tuned and turn those notifications on to find out. 
That's it for me. Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees. And once again, thank you.